welcome back. I'm gonna be doing a pageant Q&A today. The questions came from Instagram, my personal Instagram, and my pageant Instagram, which I will link down below for you. Uh, it's been, you know, an interesting couple of weeks slash months, depending on where you're at in the world. But I think that what's important is that we get to spend time really focusing on the things that we would be doing if we weren't working or at our day jobs or whatever it is that occupies the majority of our time. And for me, that means creating pageant content, pageant preparation, following up with my clients, and just doing a few other fun things like you know, impersonating different pageant contestants on my Instagrams and of course filming a Q&A for everyone. So if, you know, I hope that this brings you some sort of entertainment and I hope that wherever you're at that you're having a good time and that this is not mentally stressing you or physically stressing you. This is just something that we all have to go through together and right now um, there's nothing else that matters other than everybody else's safety. So stay home grab some popcorn and tea which is my drink of choice when i watch youtube videos and enjoy we're gonna hop right in the questions pulled up on my phone and a document here so the first question that i got was tips for having good interview answers and i think that the biggest thing that you can do is one one is the main part, the main point of interview is to let the judges know why you are the rightful title holder. And so that is to come prepared with stories and experiences that provide you with the wisdom, experience, or knowledge or values to be the title holder. That's the whole point is that you need to know what circumstances you've been through, um, situations and stories, and be able to deliver that in a very compelling way. Um, I think that the best answers often come from the best stories and the way that we're able to share them and literally take the judge with us to this place that we were at in our life so that they can visualize wow like this girl went through this I can see how this makes her a better title holder I know I'm always touching my hair but honestly it goes everywhere like it it'll be normal one second and then in my eye and then in my mouth so sorry about that in every video um, yeah I don't even I lost my train of thought so definitely knowing the stories, the experiences that you've had in your life that make you the best title holder. And then I think that another thing, I thought I had something else to having a really good answer. Oh, so I think that the way you deliver answers in interview is so important too. And I usually call um, what I call a happiness twang. So that's when you're happy about something and you're talking, like you enjoy what you're saying. You kind of sound happier, just like I'm doing right now. And you smile a little bit more, your eyes, you know, they squint just a little bit more. Whereas when you tell a more serious story or something that you went through, you want to drop the tone of voice, like really use those different aspects of voice and tone to really let the judges know that what you're saying is a sad story that comes to a good lesson or something that makes you happy. You know, emotions are something that judges want to feel because it makes you human, it makes you relatable. So those are a couple things to have good interview questions or good interview answers rather. All right, the next thing is a timeline for pageant preparation. I'm not gonna go into that because it's coming girl, don't you worry about it. But right now, the biggest thing that I can think of is when you want to join a pageant, get the details that you need. Um, write down the date of your pageant, set dates for the outfits that you would need, and practice daily. Do some sort of practice or preparation every day. And then I'll give you more later. Creating the perfect pageant mindset. So two ways that I create the perfect pageant mindset are first with affirmations or mantras that I repeat every day. Um, I think in the past, you know, I've done as the basic as I am the next title holder, or I've done a combination of things like I speak clearly and concisely when on stage, I walk gracefully in my evening gown, say these mantras, whatever, you know, sayings that you want to say, whatever, whatever it is that you want to affirm, say them every single day, close your eyes and picture yourself at the pageant and feel the emotion you would feel if you were in that situation being at your pageant. That's really gonna help you maintain a good headspace and a good mindset. And another thing too is don't worry about who else is competing, who the other contestants are, what dresses they're wearing, how they're preparing, because every second you spend worrying about what someone else is doing, that's a second taken away from focusing on you being your best self and showing up as your best, knowing that you are just as capable of being the next title holder. That was a pretty good answer, I'm not gonna lie. Um, 
So how to overcome pageant title holder slump. So what I mean by that is if you've had a title before, the period after you pass on your title, which could be, I don't know, I usually identify it within like the next three months after giving up your title, there's kind of this slump or limbo type feeling that goes on because you're no longer doing events, appearances, people aren't really reaching out to you. Like you might have some momentum, but you really just aren't doing the things that a title holder does, right? You're not the title holder anymore. And so something to overcome this, I would say, is that before you pass on your title, plan, like be very purposeful and intentional about planning things to do after your title is over. So if you enjoyed going to children's events, we'll find out other children's events that you could go to within the next three to six months. Um, if you like doing modeling, fashion shows, um, photo shoots, make it a point to plan either a photo shoot or you know apply for a fashion show to be a runway model in a fashion show after the pageant because those those networking connections you'll always have them but they just aren't as readily available and you know always people just aren't reaching out to you as often as when you're the title holder so it's really about creating the life that you want title holder or not so if you can be really intentional when you are a title holder and realize okay what do i enjoy doing and what do i want to keep doing and plan to do more of those things after you pass on your title it'll kind of diminish that that feeling of you know sadness or uh, emptiness you know sometimes i call it like a little identity crisis because you're kind of known as the title holder for that year and then another thing is to reach out to your pageant sisters the pageant sisters who have gone through it before because we've all been there and we can provide you that kind of support if you are feeling like a little bit lost after you pass on your title do you need a designer gown to be in a pageant heck no oh my goodness of course that's like a pretty easy question but i personally liked the dresses that i got from a store in person just as much as i've had like a custom designer dress and i think what this comes with it just it's just realizing that just because you have something that's custom and designer and brand new made for you doesn't mean that you're gonna love it doesn't mean it's gonna be fit for you um or doesn't mean that it's gonna be completely like perfect when you get it so even if you do choose to go for a designer dress keep in your budget money for alterations if it comes not fitting you just because that is something i personally experienced but i would just really enjoy going to a store you know knowing how much i'm spending at the store and then budgeting for alterations like i just like being able to see the dress in person and have it on me that's just my personal opinion and experience but it just depends on what you want to spend but i remember telling myself like I really want to get a designer dress I want a custom made dress that's something I want to do as a pageant contestant and one thing I just want to be able to say I did and had and I just realized that you don't need you really don't need it so take it from me save yourself like one to two thousand dollars and you could easily get a really nice dress for like a thousand dollars in your hometown that doesn't come with as much you know maybe like stress or weight on it not knowing if it's gonna fit you and then having yeah i don't know that's just my experience you don't need a designer dress you just need to feel good in whatever dress you pick and pick one that suits you what is my favorite pageant mm, this one's hard oh my goodness um i really did not watch pageants before i became you know a pageant contestant four years ago and i would say that the number one pageant that i enjoy watching has to be miss miss usa i'd say miss usa over miss universe just because um I just usa is closer and now that i follow along with the states um there's just so many pageants to watch and so many girls to watch compete that are so close to me being in canada and i love the way that you know the girls are so well advertised well spoken i love the dresses that they have the you know the dedication and discipline to compete at miss usa because realistically winning miss usa is like just as impressive as winning miss universe i also like watching miss universe too but i'd say that those are like the two main pageants that i've watched um that i really do enjoy and i'm yeah that, that's what i'd say miss usa and miss universe the next thing how will the virus affect the beauty industry? I think what someone meant to say is like the pageant industry. Um, of course, pageants are being postponed, some canceled left and right, and I think it's just gonna be something that, yeah, like I said, we all kind of have to realize that sometimes we plan things and we have an expectation and when they don't go our way, it's not the end of the world. Like we're just gonna have to adapt 
alter course and adjust you know what our expectation was and if you're able to compete the following year do so if it's one of those situations where you unfortunately age out there are other uh, other pageants in older age categories that you can compete at so don't get so down on if your pageant is postponed um, just realize why you're competing and that a pageant doesn't define the work that you do my friend Carly shout out Carly I don't know if you watch my videos but she posted a photo the other day with the caption background on Carly she's an Ironman runner her and I ran um, a marathon together she ran the marathon I ran the half and she's also a triathlete and she posted a photo saying that her races have been canceled left and right but she's still training like they're like she's going to be in the races running the races because her her training and her discipline and her love for the sport doesn't start and stop with a finish line and i just thought wow that is so powerful and impactful um, so the same thing girls if you want to make a difference you do not have to compete in a pageant to you know fulfill whatever that is whether it's mentoring other girls fundraising um, bringing awareness to a platform that can all be done on your own without a pageant so one that I'm gonna go into is what is your favorite workout? And this one was Body by Craig who sent it to me. And I'm just in awe every time I get to talk to Craig. He's a huge, um, a huge part of his clientele is pageant girls. And I can see myself doing stuff like Craig one day as a pageant coach and then as a personal trainer. I would love to combine the two and definitely be able to train girls for pageants, both like their confidence, their mentality and fitness wise all in one. So. Hi Craig, that's so awesome that we get to chat every now and then. Thank you for the question. Um, I would say that my favorite workout to do, honestly, is something that like is intense, that like makes me sweat and I feel like really awesome and like a weapon afterwards. So one that I can think of recently that I did is when I go to CrossFit. So my CrossFit friends, thanks so much for inviting me to go out there. Um, that's CrossFit in Windsor. I'll have to tag them or uh, leave their website down below But man when I go there I just feel like my body is destroyed for like the next three days because it's just so different and it pushes me at a different Level than I don't do myself. So I just love that feeling of being like yeah, I'm so strong I can do so much. Wow, and then on top of it, you know I'm sorry the next couple days, but it's all for a good purpose all for a good reason um, So yeah, I'd say workouts where like I'm really pushed to my boundaries with my body and I can really see how it performs. Yeah, that, that's my favorite workout. <laughs> Everyone, that's all for this pageant Q&A. Thanks so much for stopping by. Again, I'm gonna leave all my social media linked down below so you can follow me and we can connect on there. If you would please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel because it really supports me and shows me that you wanna keep seeing pageant related content and other content to live your ideal life every single week. Again, stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay positive. We're all going to get through this time and life will resume at some point, but keep a good headspace and I'm here if you ever need any support. That's all. See you in the next one. Bye.